Hello again, everybody. This is Mark Harris with PM Square, back with another Cognos Analytics video. And today we'll be explaining the difference between detail and summary aggregation properties on your data items in Cognos Analytics. So without further ado, let's go. So here I've built a very simple report with both a cross tab and a list from the same query. And as you can see, it's a very simple query. Revenue is my measure and product line is my dimension. These are coming out of the Go Sales query package and specifically the sales query namespace within that package. Anyway, back to the page. In our cross tab, we have brought in the product line as well as the list. We've brought in the product line and both have the revenue. As you can see, they are both returning the same result. So let's see why that, why that is. We click on the revenue uh, column in the cross tab and we can look at its data item. Its data item is revenue and it is detail aggregation is set to total and the summary aggregation is set to default. This is how it came in when dragged onto the report from the package. Uh, nothing has changed uh, since, since that has happened. And you will see the exact same information if we click on revenue from the list point of, point of view. Um, now, so the, that total is basically being used to determine these values in the cross tab um, measure cells or fact cells. If I were to change total from, uh, change, the, change the detail aggregation from total to say um, average, you'll notice that the values are gonna change. Um, looking at lower levels of the product line, we, we know that there are individual products and this is gonna be how we're coming up with these values here. It's an average across product lines for revenue of all those different products within that product line. So we'll revert that back to total and we'll be happy with what we've got at this point. So now in the cross tab realm, we wanna create a row at the bottom that is kind of our summary row that totals up um, all the different product lines. So we'll click on the product line and edge and then click the summarize button and just choose default summary that adds a summary row at the bottom and it is indeed totaling revenue based on the summary aggregation of default the default is going to be using whatever is defined in the framework model or data module the model behind the uh, the package in this case it's a framework model I'm going to go ahead and change the summary aggregation from default to average. And you'll notice that that summary value changes. It is now an average of all the product line values. So if we were to average out 729, 726, 75, 1.589 million for 109, we would get 706 as our average. So again, I'm going to change that really quick back to and I'll change it to total, and then I'll change it back to average again, just so you can see how that affects the cross tab. So over on the list side, it's a little bit of a different story. If I were to click revenue and click the summary toolbar button and click default summary, I'm going to get the overall summary of 3.5 million. As it is continuing to use the detail aggregation. Um, in our case here, we're really looking for the average. So this is not getting us what we're looking for. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this change and remove that row and show you how we do things a little bit differently in the list. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just select the list itself and I'm gonna come up to the three dot uh, more menu and I'm going to click on headers and footers. And then I'm going to specify that I'd like to set list headers and footers. And really what I'm all I'm trying to do here is just set up an overall footer. So I'm going to go ahead and select that. 
and that adds our overall row. Great. There's no data in it, so it's not quite there yet. So I'm going to click on that overall row, and then I'll come up to the toolbar, and I'm going to cl click on the split cell. That'll basically create two cells to match with our two columns on that row. Now this cell here is where we need to see our average value. Um, how do we get that in there? So the first thing we need to do is we need to unlock the report. So we go ahead and do that. And then simply drag in from the query revenue into that cell. And you'll notice it is the average that we're looking for that is set again on the summary aggregation within the revenue data item. Again, if I change this to total, you'll note that both the summary row and the cross tab derived using the summarize toolbar and the overall row, which is a uh, list uh, foot eight, footer row, if you will, both change with that summary aggregation change. So let me go ahead and change it back to average, and you'll see that that's how we're getting uh, the use of the summary aggregation in the, uh, in the list. Uh, you'll notice that this is um, formatted to show left, so we'll go ahead and click on that to show it to the right. Um, and now we have basically the same result in both our cross tab and our list. So to recap, the difference between the detail aggregation and summary aggregation for your data item, your measurable data item, in a cross tab is going to be slightly different in how it's implemented versus a list, but ultimately they are both going to affect the list and the cross tab in the same manner as is the detail aggregation. So again, if I change detail aggregation to average, you'll notice both the list and the cross tab uh, main rows are going to be affected in the same manner. We'll go ahead and revert that back to total. And that is about all I wanted to show you with regards to differentiation between detail aggregation and summary aggregation. I hope you found this insightful. I hope this helps clear up any confusion you might have had. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at PM Square. All right, take care, and we'll see you next time.